So hello everybody from the workshop once again and uh, it's turned out to be a bit of a better morning this morning the, the sun, sun is just coming through so it's it, it's very bright un under the shelter so I'm going to get set up out there to film and what we're going to do is take a, a look at the centre of the boat which is the next major uh, departure from the plans um, with things that, that, that I did differently and have still got to do differently so that's, uh, that's what we're going to do today. So I just briefly want to talk about doing, doing, doing and, and, and learning about doing video work um, very quickly before um, we go out there. So last time uh, I did one of this series which is a kind of show and tell series about the, uh, the construction and thinking you know, of, of, of the, the boat project itself is that what I discovered as a format to use is to do a sequence of photographs of, of the build because I think the photographs tell you know a really, a really good story uh, in that you know you can you can stop freeze frame and, and look at you know something that I did and you know ask, ask, ask questions if you like so what I'll do first um, is to run through a, a short sequence of the stills photographs I took uh, during the relevant uh, construction of, of the boat so that's you know from the bottom panel going on centerboard in frames what, whatever and it shows how the, uh, the, the centre of the boat was laid out and then one of, once we've gone through that set up outside and uh, I'll just film and talk you know, about what's going on uh, in the middle of the boat and what, what, needs, what needs to be done there so um, yeah let's get on with it I hope you can see that um, well enough that we're just going to focus on the, the, the central area of the boat here and what we've got is um, this large compartment which is uh, quite a tall so quite a deep compartment which, which, which isn't fastened yet and I'm going to open that up in a, in a moment um, that's the, the sort of one the, the largest single compartment on the boat which is going to be ballast and battery and uh, uh, dry stowage, and then with the uh, the centerboard case off to off to port, you see that, that that's quite a large working area. Um, port outboard is then formed by the uh, two raised sections of uh, of those frames to give a, a pair a pair of lockers here. Uh, just moving out to the port side of the boat, this shows the uh, the uh, dry locker area, uh, port and outboard. I think one of the important things that uh, I was thinking about right from the start with this boat, it's going to carry a lot of stores, it's going to carry a lot of gear because I intend to do quite long trips with this boat. So I really uh, started to think about stowage early on and um, what, I've, what, I, what I created with these two large lockers uh, which you know, at the lids. The, the aft one uh, I actually in, intended as a, not so much a fridge but, a, but an ice box so it was going to be built with, with, with insulation and with a liner uh, to keep uh, cold food in but I, I didn't do it because I, I found it uh, very 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 difficult to ensure that I, could, that I could get 
any water out from underneath it. So at the moment it's, it's just a dry locker, I mean, it's a big dry locker, um, but I've got to think again about uh, cold food storage because I do find it quite pleasant in, the, in, in, in summer sailing to have you know, food on ice or in ice to keep you know, things like milk, dairy products, meat um, nice and fresh. But what it means at the moment is I've got you know, two large uh, dry component, <laughs> two large dry uh, lockers uh, to play with. So I hope you, hope you can see that. While we're uh, showing and showing, showing and telling the side of the boats, I'd just like, like to show you just a, a couple of the small technical details. And they are that um, I, I've built the centerboard um, raising tackle. Uh, that's that's intention. That's on this cleat, and that's that's in use. And uh, if you're wondering what this line is, it's its opposite, which is the uh, which is a centerboard downhaul um, line. And the reason I've got that, two reasons, is I made the centerboard slightly lighter, lighter than standard. Uh, John's board has something like, I think, 40 pounds of lead in it. Mine only has about half of that. So the board will be um, ever so slightly um, floating towards neutral. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily always easily uh, drop, drop down at sea. So it has a downhaul line, which will also keep it down in the, in, in, in the, in the, in the event of a capsize. And obviously all I have to do for example, when I'm beaching or going back onto the trailer, is, 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 let, is let that go. Um, one small detail I'm going to be working on uh, during the winter is that the, uh, the centreboard heaving tackle uh, is slightly in the way for the second person sitting, sitting in the cuddy. So I'm going to make a simple strop, which will go from the centreboard eye down to the deck ahead of it, which will keep the centreboard up when we want to be using the cuddy with the centreboard up, say, say at anchor. So that's one small detail uh, that I'll show in, in the next stage of talking about the cuddy. So that's, that, that's this side to sort of dealt with as well. So um, just, just filming from the, the back of the cuddy here, uh, I hope what you can see is that uh, the boat is obviously uh, asymmetric in that the centreboard is uh, not here, but um, you know, a few, few centimetres to, to port. Uh, some people have you know, queried this and have said, well, does an off centreboard uh, work? And I think it does, in that several designers have actually used this, this system over the years. And I initially picked it up uh, not from not from John, Mel John Mel one of jo John Melford's designs, but from one of um, several, in fact, of uh, the late Phil Bolger's designs, where he often used you know, an off-center up to board. The, uh, the important thing seems to be that um, it's, um, it's, its position off-center doesn't seem to matter that much, doesn't seem to change the sailing quality of the boat very much, but obviously it has to be um, exactly fore and aft along, along the longitudinal axis uh, otherwise the boat would, would always want to go, want to go one, one way or the other and of course uh, a boat uh, doesn't necessarily have to have a centre board so for example it could be a dagger board which is a, you know, a vertical sliding board or lee boards which uh, swing on the side of the boat and um, one thing I was very, very tempted to do very early on when I was work, working on you know, what to do with uh, the construction was, was, was perhaps to do lee boards, which I'm familiar with for, uh, from Thames barges and, uh, and, and Dutch yachts, because then you've got the, the, the centre of the boat is, is you know, uh, completely free of anything like a, a structure like, 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 like this. Um, and a boat I was very, very inspired by was uh, designed by the late uh, David Thomas in this country. And what he put on one of his small cruising boats called Red Fox was a, a, <coughs> a dagger board either side. And in fact, an, an asymmetric dagger board, so they actually have a lifting surface. And they just go up and down, you know, through, um, almost, almost through the side of the boat. So that was, not, that was an idea. Uh, as well, but ultimately what I did was this uh, simpler layout of just having the centreboard 
uh, off to one side and something that you'll see from the photographs is that the the board case sits partially on um, the, the, the build string so it sits on a, you know, a, a very solid uh, piece of boat. Now the other uh, deviation from, from plans that worked was that uh, I remade two of the frames so uh, at the front, of the, the front of the board is frame number three uh, which goes across at that point as per plans and then frame number five and what I did is I remade those so instead of going straight across the, the boat at that level they actually have this raise uh, to form uh, the, the, this, this uh, locker area out to port. So what it does, it, um, I mean, it gives me this you know, very large central working area which will form you know, a chart table at sea, cook, cooking area and ultimately um, what you can't see in this view is that the whole of the back of the boat will become a huge sleeping area for two people. You know, it's a very really big area. So I just lifted the uh, centre cover off and this just, 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 just shows the, uh, the structure of where I'm up to at the moment. This is only uh, dry builds at the moment so this uh, bulkhead pops out that's, uh, that's going to be uh, a support and a, a dividing bulkhead uh, in, in, inside the main compartment. Um, this bearer is ready to go that will go something like that and then this will form a one compartment with a, a very large battery this is going to be about 60 kilos and about 200 amp hour battery um, really right in the center of the boat and, and as low as possible and then this large dry compartment um, under here um, which is going to be one of the main dry storage compartments in the boat the um, on, on, in terms of the battery compartments I haven't got the battery yet um, but I've seen two that might do the job. They are uh, as absorbed glass mat or AGM batteries, and that's going to be a single large battery in that compartment. I've already laid the wiring in for that, and that was two runs of two and a half millimeter square section uh, wiring. One will be the feed, which will be from the solar panels and uh, the charging units, and one will obviously be the outflow uh, to uh, w whatever uh, electrical devices. I, ha I have you know going but uh, the, the, the the main part of it I think is the fact that the the battery of 60 kilograms will be forming one of the main parts of balance of the boat and what I might also put under here as per you know John Wellsford's instructions for sailing the boat early on is probably something like a bag of sand you know, 20 kilos as well so there could be easily you know 80, 80 kilos of ballast under here and then water under the the, uh, the section ahead of it, so you know, 80 towards 100 kilos of, of ballast. Because he says it is quite a powerful boat, and with the rig that I'm building, it's going to be a, you know, a, a powerful sailing boat. So that's the uh, this some of the work that's going to be going on you know, over the winter. Kind of ready, to, ready, ready to go, really. So I just put this back in. Right, and that's a, a quick look at the centre of the boat uh, for now, and uh, I'll show you more work on this uh, as it gets done over the winter. But that's kind of the, the middle of the boat for now, so there you go.